for you? We have 493,000 in new growth, which is a considerable amount increase than what was anticipated. But a lot of that came from going back to picking up a lot of permits that were less than 100% the year before. Uh, also, just a lot of data that's just been picked up in five months. Our new growth for 2010 was over Five 500, right? 560 yeah, yeah, I have it. You, you did provide it to me. I was right, and, and a lot of that, if I'm not mistaken, was when you were there. Yes. Let's uh, let's hold questions from the audience until she gets to the presentation, and I'll open it up for discussion. I, I want to understand the rest of it. If I don't understand it, we don't. It's actually in the packet. Okay. As we go through it, we'll all make sure. Okay. Thank you. Below, you'll find the scenarios if you were to shift the rate. I don't know if you want me to read them or if you just. I think it would be more effective to explain what the shift means for those that uh, in the audience that would like to know and board members that might not understand or haven't sat through one of these hearings in the past. Okay. I understand it, so you don't have to do it for my education, okay, but, but if you want, you can go, go right ahead. To sh I'll just brief explain it. Absolutely. To shift the rate, what happens is when you have your total levy and your total amount of residential, commercial, personal property, and industrial, you can only shift to a certain amount because there's so, there's a percentage that is borne by each class. So obviously if you're in a community that has a higher percentage that is borne by your CIP, then you can shift higher. In a bedroom community like North Reading, our shift is only 1.5. So what happens in, in a case like that, you can only shift up to the 1.5, bearing the rate higher on your CIP, reducing your residential. Because 87.5% of the taxes are paid by residents, and the other 12.5% is paid by correct. the CIP. So that's Which why. Which is not so really, right. not a lot. Okay. If the intent of the Board of Selectmen were to afford residential taxpayers the lowest possible share percentage of the tax burden under state law for fiscal year 2011, then your minimum residential factor selection would be 92.513, which would result in the anticipated following rates. The, the lowest residential rate by the chart would be 1282, and the highest on your commercial and industrial would be 21.01, if the rate was to shift to the max. Terry, can I just stop you there and ask one question? Mm -hmm. You have an average uh, residential value for FY 2011, but it doesn't appear to be an average uh, commercial or industrial property value for the same time period? Yeah, the, I can give you that number. I'm sorry, here. that was a typo. Oh, it's, I see. It's oh, three, oh, yeah. oh. 388,400, well, somewhere around there. I, I apologize. That's all right. And to let you know, <coughs> too, with this year being a reval year, our commercial and industrial really did go down, went down on an, about 2% from last year. And that's not uncommon. A lot of areas on this side of the North Shore and, well, probably everywhere, really have felt a decrease in the CIP. And the reason that is, is a lot of your commercial and industrial, as much as your residential is feeling a hit, increase with the economic value, so is your CIP. And they, you know, they're 
taxable properties that don't bear on your infrastructure in town. So going down the 2%, we, you know, really held them. And what did you see in terms of residential values? The residential values in class one, uh, class, one? Real, class one is all of your residential. The total, and that's your condos, your, your single percent. family was minor. Your single family actually did not go down at all. Okay. At all. Well, I ask an important question, I think, this part. Yes, Mike Hogan. Um, can you just quickly ex explain to the p folks at home and the people in the crowd you, how you come up with property value for a residential property and how you establish it for a commercial property. So for example, a residential property you use assessed value, correct? Correct. For a residential property, how do you do it? Commercial, industrial. Uh, commercial, oh, commercial, commercial, industrial, right, CIP. Well, the CIP actually has to have three approaches to value. Your most common is your market and then your income. The income is provided to us by the CIP owners, and they give us their rents, their expenses, their vacancies. And with that, we analyze, and I'll just give you a brief, industrial <coughs> property. If their expenses are typically 15% of their gross income and their vacancy is 5%, then we would average that out. Your residential is basically all market. Yeah. Whatever the market tells us, what people are purchasing property for, your CIP is a little more involved. But who makes the decision to pick that formula? Who, I'm sorry? Who, who decides that they use that particular formula for CIP it's for our town? It's state. It's mandated. Not mm, no, is it mandated? I mean, you have the we right. We have to have three approaches to value to certify our values. Okay. What's the third approach? There's yeah. market, there's income. There's market, income, and sales. And cost. And cost. 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 Right. So income would be sales. But you, we don't really have a lot of sale properties for, you know, CIP. It's very limited. A lot of times you have to go outside of that community. What sort of inf information does a property owner in the CIP category provide to you to show you proof of what their <coughs> income and expenses are? Are you talking tax returns? What do, you, what, what do they have to provide to you? We send them out what is called an income and expense form, and that is a very detailed form. They send it to us if we still need additional information because something is not clear and concise, then we will either meet with them and request more information or you know, whatever it takes to get that. So I think that's a really good question though. And, and so to maybe help feed off that. So let's say there's a building on 28, Route 28 Main Street that's vacant. How do you assess that when there is absolutely no revenue, no income for that building? If it's in the location with all other retail and we have the analysis sorted out by square footage um, location, we would still apply that same rent, vacancy, and expenses to that building. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, move on. Is, is it germane to where we are at this point, or? Where do we need to find buildings that are not attractive because they don't have a commercial building in the neighborhood, or do we assess value on going down to the residential income? Oh, wow, what? Go ahead. So can you explain for me uh, the ten lines there? Could, could you speak? I, I know this is a little complicated, but could you come up yeah, to the uh, podium? Just so that uh, our, <laughs> just so our uh, viewing audience can hear you. Absolutely. So, so my question is, um, you made a comment uh, related to assess values of the residential, which is 87.5% of the total uh, valuation in the town. It has not moved at all from 2008 to 2009, which is the values, my understanding. A very minor move. Worst economy that we've ever seen since the Depression um, values are way down, sales certainly are down, 
I gotta believe the average value has to be down as well. Can you, do you have any proof points? Do you have any, do you? Okay, I would like to see that your, because. Your values, your residential values are actually not in a decline. The number of sales have declined. But in other words, if a property would sell for 750,000, <coughs> it may sell still for 750,000. We're not, the, but the number of 750,000 sales are not occurring as often. That, that is what we're finding. Oh, I'd like to see, uh, we, I, I would like to see, because my understanding is talking to many different real estate agents in the town, the valuation that's being put on these homes when they, when they go to market mm -hmm. are much lower than they have been in any other year. So that, the value that ac actually they determine to put it on the market at, okay. And, and they may sell 10% less than that, is uh, much lower. So I would, like to, I would like to see some detailed analysis of comparisons for 2000 and 2009 and those sales that occurred. Okay, I do actually have what's called an LA-3 that we submitted to the Department of Revenue okay. that is the certification of our residential values. You're more than welcome to come in. I'll okay. go through with you and, and show okay. you exactly what we use for analysis. Yeah, I think that should be presented here because that's a huge part of how you determine the rate. And, and the other piece is obviously the levy. So we need to understand where the levy comes from because the rate is obviously going to go up again. And I, I come up here because I've talked to Mr. Delaney quite a bit about this. My property taxes, <coughs> five hidden pond land, have gone up, went up 7.5% from the previous year to the last year. 7.5% from 10,400 to 11,200. And my understanding is, it, and that was, again, 2008 was a very bad year as well as, well as 2000, uh, compared to 2007. So I don't understand how in a prop proposition two and a half that my personal real estate can go up from the two and a half to seven and a half percent. In so the two, the two and a half is on the total. It's not on right. your individual. And, and that's, it's very hard to, you know, so understand that, but it's, it's on the total of what we can raise plus our growth. I, I don't and expect your it to go down. Is an offset. Right, but I, I would like to understand where we come up with the levy. Obviously, that's the, the numerator to the denominator of the mm -hmm. value because I think the values have gone down. I know we're trying to, you know, certainly we need to spend our two and a half percent in order to provide the town services, but at the end of the day, I, I don't understand how taxes can go up in the worst economy that we've seen. And, and, and it j I gotta tell you guys, the reason I'm here is to make sure we understand we need to be in touch with the folks that are in this town. Raising taxes to that degree, I lost my job two years ago. It's a reality, all right? But there, there is, the reality is the money's not there. We, we can't keep raising taxes to provide the services. That's what's up. Thank you very much. Continue. Okay, the uh, selection of the discount for open space, which is one of the votes that you have to take. <coughs> A maximum exemption of 25% may be adopted for all properties as classified as open space. The town of North Reading has never voted on a discount for open space in the past since no properties have been identified which fulfill the requirements of this exemption. That's the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> the residential. This is granting the residential and or small commercial exemption. The Board of Selectmen may adopt a residential ex exemption for all residential properties in the town that are owner occupied. The exemption amount would be up to 20% of the average assessed value of all properties eligible <coughs> to be taxed at the residential tax rate, including vacant parcels as part of the total parcel count. Although the thought of granting a residential exemption to owner-occupied residential properties appear to be a form of tax relief, this is not completely the case. It is true that some properties would receive tax relief through the adoption of this measure. However, since the tax 